if you have hypoglycemia, you should not skip breakfast. You should eat a high protein or fiber breakfast. Eat every two to three hours. Snack between the meals. Avoid fasting more than 12 hours between dinner and breakfast. If you have insulin resistance, you should avoid eating sugars, period. Limit food quantity. Limit starchy food to avoid fatigue after a meal. Increase physical activity. Folks, if between meals like lunch and dinner or breakfast and lunch, you go too long without eating, you become irritable, shaky, lightheaded, nervous, or upset, this is because your blood sugar is dropping too low. Hi, my name is Donna Leffer, and I've been coming to Dr. Moss for several months. And uh, when I first started coming here, I felt very tired, bloated. I had a lot of weight gain, and I couldn't lose it. And um, now that I'm on the metabolic treatments, I'm feeling much better, more energetic. I'm sleeping better, and my overall health is, is much better. Um, my energy level has increased. Um, I'm exercising every day, and I feel great, and I really want to thank Dr. Moss for that. Deprives your brain from fuel. If you become tired after a meal, you may be eating too much, eating too much carb for your body, not getting enough exercise. If you get shaky, lightheaded, uh, irritable, or crash in between uh, meals or afternoon, you are either going too long without eating or not getting enough fiber and protein to stabilize your blood sugar. The person with insulin resistance typically feels drowsy after a meal and may even need a nap. So you need to eat breakfast of a high quality protein and fat. Many symptoms of blood sugar imbalances such as sleep issues, irritability, being agitated, and energy crashes start to diminish with a low carbohydrate diet. You need to avoid certain food because they have shown to have trigger inflammation and stress in many people, which will exacerbate your autoimmune condition. It exacerbates inflammation and poor brain health. The standard American diet, I call it SAD diet, most people follow includes not only excess sugar and refined carbs, but also industrially processed food, chemical additives, GMO, hybridized food. This diet is very, very inflammatory. You need to avoid all sugars and sweeteners, even honey, agave, maple syrup, coconut sugar, Coconut is good, but not the coconut sugar. Date sugar. Do not be deceived with low glycemic sweeteners. They are still high in sugar. High glycemic fruit you need to avoid. Watermelon, mango, pineapple, raisins, grapes, canned fruit. Very bad for you. Avoid all fruit juice and carrot juice. You should eat your fruit and juice your vegetables. You need to eliminate simple sugars and carbs. Avoid fermented foods, sauerkrauts, kimchi, pickled uh, anything, ginger, fermented cucumbers. Avoid soda, period. No soda. Carbonation is not good. Carbonation should go out of the body. You don't put what's supposed to go out, put it in. Seltzer water is no good either. It has carbonation. Avoid Coke, period. Over eight spoon of sugar in a can of Coke. Maybe it's 12, I don't, uh, last time I checked, I thought it was eight, but I, somebody else told me it's 12. Diet Coke is worse. Aspartame causes brain degeneration, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis. I have talked about it on my previous videos. Avoid gum. Gum for kids is not good because it's got aspartame. Why they make it? Because it's cheap to make. Avoid popcorn and rice cakes. 
it's got fiber. You see big letters on it, it has fiber, but it's very bad because it has high glycemic index. Glycemic index before 50 is good. What has below 50 is big pitted vegetables, big pitted fruits, I meant. Peach is good, plums is good. Avoid vitamin water, crystal light, crystal water. They are horrible. They are full of sugar. Avoid dairy, milk, cream cheese, butter, whey, because many people have sensitivity to them and they don't even know about it because they haven't been tested. Hi, I am Kian and I had a, I have a, I had a severe allergy to dairy and gluten. But then I went to Medwell where I took this bio scan and now I can eat anything I want. I have no, I have no uh, reaction or, and I'm not allergic anymore to dairy and gluten. And it's drug free, chemical free and no pain at all. And I will know because I am very sensitive to pain. I recommend you to go, I recommend you to go to Medwell and do the and take the bio skin. Soy milk is not good because it causes estrogen stimulation and estrogen causes big breasts, especially for male, called gynecomastia. You need to avoid milk. Let me tell you a little story about milk. Milk, as I have said in the videos before, I don't want to go off tangent, but milk is species specific, which means human's milk for human, cow's milk for cow. The reason they give a calf milk is because they want a uh, calf that is 65 pounds to become 400 pounds. So when they give that, the calf becomes 400 pounds and they sell it. You cannot give cow's milk to humans, you cannot give human milk to cow. Actually, they did a study at the Harvard Medical School. They gave human milk to cow to 10 cows and all 10 of them died. The best milk is coconut milk or rice milk. Avoid eggs or foods that contain eggs, such as mayonnaise. Avoid alcohol. Instant coffee is contaminated with a lot of gluten. People don't know these things. Avoid processed or canned food. You need to avoid processed fats, such as vegetable oil, hydrogenated oil, and focus on ample amounts of clean, healthy fats from organic pastured animals, wild seafood and nuts. Hydrogenated fat is not good. They take hydrogen and force fat into it. So fried food is out of question. Avoid french fries and fried food. Barbecue meat is good, but those black lines that you see, they're not good. They cause free radicals in the body. Best way of cooking is steaming, boiling, or slow cooking. Worst is fried food and barbecue with the black lines, as I said. It is important to eat sufficient food that are rich and healthy for you, that have healthy fat and they are organic. Eating the appropriate fat is vital for good brain health. After all, 60% of your brain is made of fat. And fat, the good fat that you eat, affects your composition of your brain, the way you think the way you act, the way your body functions. Fats found in processed foods or heated vegetable oils, they're not good. And they can make the membranes of your nerve cells rigid and unresponsive, leading to improper neuron function, brain inflammation, degeneration, Alzheimer's, symptoms of brain, and, uh, f uh, symptoms of brain fog, cloudy thinking, many of you suffer with that. Your diet must be high in good fats. Essential fatty acids, they call it EFAs, are critical 
for various functions of the body, for lowering inflammation, improving blood vessels, supporting circulation, supporting healthy skin growth, supporting nail growth, supporting healthy brain function and nervous system. If your goal is mainly to lower your inflammation, you should have regular fish oil or fish oil with a concentrated EPA is appropriate. However, if your goal is to positively impact the chemical status of your brain, then consider a fish oil with high concentration of DHA. DHA is critical and it's missing on a lot of food that we give to our young children, young adults, and adults to help their brain fog, cloudy thinking, uh, lack of concentration, forgetfulness. So there's different types of fish oil based on the condition and symptoms that you have. We want to give them to you to help your general overall health. If you suffer from chronic systemic inflammation, body aches, joint pain, you should take regular fish oil that has EPA. EPA reduces inflammation, both in adults and children, in the body and in the brain. And it will support anti-inflammatory processes in the body. If your brain is not working well, it is important it's very important to address and intake omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Please note, despite which supplements you use, limit your intake of fried food, partially hydrogenated fats and processed vegetable oils, and eat more cold fish, olive oil, avocados, and raw nuts and seeds. It is very, very, very important. But what I meant by cold fish is cold water fish, not sushi. Sushi is not good for you either. They have a lot of pest, uh, parasites. We find it all the time in our patients. If possible, obtain your meats and eggs from an animal raised on grass stores that they sell. There's plenty of them all around. You should not radiate your food with microwave. Bad diet causes infertility. We have had cases like that. We had a patient who had infertility and we fixed the patient's diet and it was resolved. I am not saying that we cure infertility. All I'm saying is you need to fix your body and general overall health. A lot of your symptoms should go away. Sometimes with medication, sometimes without medication. That's why we have multidisciplinary team of doctors, of medical doctors, chiropractors. We fix patients' overall health. Folks, anything derived from corn is no good. Corn syrup, popcorn, it's not good. Avoid corn syrup. It's in many foods, we have talked about it before, that you don't know about it, therefore you need to read labels. If you have gut or brain inflammation, you will not get better if you don't fix your diet. This is why what I'm saying is extremely important. Coffee is very acidic and it's bad. It also causes insulin production which makes your fat which makes your fat stays in your body and you cannot lose weight. And it also messes with your cortisol levels. You need to give yourself more time to shop and prepare as you always have something in your hand and close by when you're hungry to eat. Most vegetables are good. Asparagus, spinach, lettuce, broccoli, beets, cauliflowers, celery, artichokes onions, rhubarb, cucumbers, turnips, meats, fish, chicken, get it from an organic farm, low glycemic fruits, apricots, plums, apples, peaches, they're good, pears, cherries, 
Coconut is very good. Coconut oil is good. Coconut butter is good. Coconut milk is good. Coconut cream is good. Coconut sugar is no good. Herbal teas is good. Olive and olive oil, it's good. Make sure you do not cook olive oil. It loses all the good stuff that it has. Bone broth is good. Liver is very good. There is a big controversy. Liver and organ meat, they are very good from good sources. Liver's job is to neutralize toxins. That's why it is good. We build so many toxins every day by our diet. We need to get rid of them. Stress can make you toxins. Raw pumpkin seeds in salad, it's good. There is a chemical in the pumpkin seeds that parasites hate it. So having a spoonful of uh, pumpkin seed is good if you are suspected that you have parasites. Oil of oregano is another thing that's good for parasites. Reverse osmosis water, it's good, but it takes everything out. So the best system that I recommend is getting a reverse osmosis system to take everything out and then put minerals back in. Because your body needs minerals, we talked about it. Alkaline water, alkalizing your body is good, but alkaline water is dangerous and it's bad because as we have talked before about this in other videos, your stomach needs to be acidic. When you have alkaline water, where does it go first? Alkalizes your stomach. That's why you have indigestion. That's why you have problems. Because your stomach needs acidic and you need hydrochloric acid to break down the food. Organic meat is very good. My favorite is superfood plant-based protein. That's a key food because they are not cooked. They are not damaged amino acids such as gluten we talked about. Like I said before, you need to get educated, not medicated. There is no unique inflammation protocol that we follow. Everybody is different. Our medical doctors and chiropractors work together to fix your body and fix your symptoms. Remember, fix your body first, then your symptoms may go away. If you are not medicating yourself to fix an organ or one system of your body, you will be on meds for a long time because the body works as one unit. So you cannot medicate yourself for one symptom or one organ of the body. There is no such a thing as a thyroid medication. When you take a medication, it affects the whole entire body. When you have a thyroid problem, it affects the whole entire body and we need to address the whole entire body and we need to do a complete body scan. Our passion is to help, to help people with chronic problems, chronic pain, chronic hormonal issues, chronic fatigue and tiredness. Our doctors are trained and studied functional medicine, functional medicine, functional neurology, functional endocrinology, to have a better understanding what is going on with your body, what testing we need to do to find the underlying cause, and how to fix the problem naturally, without medication. If you want to change your life and reinvent your life, give us a call, we are here for you. Call us at 201-848-8000 and God bless.